What's up guys, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoots and today I've got an incredibly useful video for you if you record anything and edit it inside of Premiere Pro using multi-track audio. What does that mean? Well, that means that after you've recorded something, you can go ahead and edit the individual volumes of, say, the game sound, your friends talking, and your microphone at the very bottom. Of course, there's an infinite number of use cases for this, and it's very useful indeed. Loot. Yikes, was well, we all know office, office windows. Basically, without getting into too much detail, I record using OBS into an MKV video file with three audio tracks. Once I've done that, I demux it so I can import it into Premiere Pro. Obviously, you can't bring in MKVs anymore. They've removed that feature, so you have to make it an MP4. Once I've done that, I'm usually left with the MP4 as well as three AAC files, which are just stereo audio tracks. I then bring them into my project, line them up as such where it's the video track, audio one, one, two, three, and they're all stereo. Of course, if you drag and drop a single multi-track video in, you'll probably see the exact same thing. That's just my way of getting around it. Anyways, assuming that you have a reason to export, keeping all of your audio tracks separate, then this is the tutorial for you because you will find this incredibly useful. What I used to do was render out the video, audio one, audio two, audio three, as such, where I have an MP4 file, followed by three WAV files, which are audio one, two, three, and they take up quite a bit of space respectively. Obviously, there's quite a few files that I could clean up and make this look a lot better. There's a ton of files here right now, but dividing it by four, 321 divided by four, is around 80 or so. So there'd be way less files, they might be slightly better compressed, and it'd be easier to manage. Why do I render out into a video file with three channels of audio? Well, I simply do this to save short clips out of very long recording sessions so I can go back and edit them later. Recording for hours at a time will take up a hell of a lot of space, especially if you record at higher quality. So you do have reason to chop out little sections that you're going to get to eventually. In order to edit them properly later, you want to keep the audio tracks separate so that you can change the individual volumes, remove one thing or another, and you know, use them as you would any other multi-track video and audio. That being said, how exactly do we combine all of these files over here, the video file and the three or however many audio tracks, into one single file? Well, it's actually a little bit difficult to set up, but once you've done it at least once, then you can save the presets and you'll basically never have to worry about it again. It's actually really awesome. What do I mean by that? Well, instead of dragging in a video track and three audio tracks, all you have to do is drag and drop in the finished product. You have the video as well as the three audio tracks that are all linked. You can unlink it and edit each one individually as you would normally. So how exactly do we get to the point of rendering this little piece inside of our editing software into that finished multi-track audio video file? Well, it's a little bit difficult, but I'm gonna simplify it from here. So first of all, we need to create ourselves a multi-track video sequence. So to do that, simply find an empty spot in your project manager, right click, new item, sequence. Once you have this window open, all you need to do is pick a preset if you have one already made, otherwise go into the settings and then begin picking out the settings that you usually have. So 60 FPS, 2560 by 1440, square pixels, no progressive scan, 60 FPS time code, sample rate is fine, fine, preview files are fine. So once you've gone ahead and set up the basic video settings, head across the tracks tab at the very top. Basically, you'll start with three audio tracks as such. All you need to do is make sure where it says master, you change it from stereo to multi-channel. Then number of channels, we need to set to the number of mono audio tracks we need. So because we have three stereo audio tracks, that means three times two, that's six. So number of channels, we'll select six. Then down here, you can obviously add more using the plus and possibly even give the tracks a name, but I'm gonna leave them as such. Track type, you can leave as standard or you can set to something like stereo submix. However, I'm gonna leave them all at standard. Then under output assignments, you need to go through each one of these and click their buttons. So the first one, you click the button, you can see master channel one, two, three, four, five, six, and you can tick which one you want the left, right audio to go into. So one, two, left, right. Then we'll have a look at the second track here. We'll hit the button. We'll uncheck number one and check number two over here. So three, four, left, right. Okay. And the last one, five, six, tick and uncheck the first one. So now we've got these going out into their own separate audio channels. That's great. From here, I highly recommend you go back to these settings, make sure everything's set up again, and at the very bottom, you'll hit save preset. Then I'll name it three channel 1440p. Of course, you can name it whatever you want. Okay, and then it should be under your custom on the very far left over here. So you can just hit okay, 
and set the name to whatever you want. So this doesn't immediately look too different from our original sequence over here that I showed you. However, if you take note of this audio preview on the very far right, you see that it changes to have these little buttons underneath and a lot of breaks in these yellow lines. Going back to this one, I'll just hit play and you can see exactly what it looks like. Yikes, was like oh, up here in the audio clip mixer, you can see these channels moving individually and the one on the far right, which is the output, has just got two channels left and right. So I'll copy it from wherever I'm editing it into this multi-channel sequence. Of course, you can go ahead and start editing in this multi-channel sequence, but you can always bring in tracks later on. So here's something interesting. If I hit play, you can see all three of these moving as the audio is diverted to each one of these. However, we can only hear the first track over here, which is the in-game sound. If I mute this track and hover over a waveform, you can see that as they're talking here or doing anything, nothing is coming through into the sound of my PC, into my headphones or speakers. How exactly do we fix that? Well, these buttons under this little audio preview at the very bottom say monitor channels one and two, three and four, five and six. Simply just check all of them like such. And when you hit play, you'll hear the audio from all of these tracks. If you don't want to hear an output, simply uncheck it and you'll hear everything but that channel you just unchecked. So that's how you edit a sequence with multiple audio tracks. How exactly do we get to exporting it? Well, first of all, control S to save your project right before we get to exporting. Hold control and hit M or use file export and you'll have this familiar window over here. So unfortunately, you won't be able to use H.264 because if we go across to the audio tab, you see over here, channels, stereo, mono, 5.1, we don't have the option to add more audio tracks. No matter what you do here, as far as I know, you're not able to change this to what it needs to be. If we have a look at some custom exporting plugins, Vocoder, a popular one, which I've done a video on before, linked in the description down below, has only got stereo, mono, and 5.1 audio support, and Daniel 2, which is another popular exporting plugin, supports multi-track audio for the Daniel 2 preset, and not H.264. What does that mean? Well, probably nothing to you if you don't have these exporting plugins installed. However, if you're exporting to Synergy Daniel 2, you can simply set up your video however you like it, make sure export audio is ticked, audio, and you can go over here and select six channels so that we're saving both the left, right for the three channels that we have in our editing. So obviously most users won't have this. You'll probably want to head across to QuickTime. Then you may have these Apple ProRes, etc., etc. If you have Vocoder or something along those lines, However, more than likely, you'll be using GoPro Cineform Yov 10-bit, which is a pretty popular one and works really well in my opinion. Once you set up everything on the video tab to match how you like, head across to the audio tab. You can change the audio sample rate, the sample size, and down here is where things get important. So I'm not gonna use YUV 10-bit, I'm gonna instead use Apple ProRes 422. However, there's basically no difference on this audio tab. It's just the video tab that some things change. Either way, audio, sample rate is correct, sample size I'll set to 24 bits, and down here is where things are important. So make sure that each one of these are stereo. Of course, if you have three stereo channels, you'll want to export to three stereo channels. All you need to do is hit the plus down here, change it to two stereo, plus again, and change it to stereo. So you can see source channels, one, two, three, four, five, six, which is the same way that they're set up in our actual sequence itself audio stream one, two, three, and that's it. We've basically set it up to export now. From here, all you need to do is head up to the very top over here and hit this little save button and we'll give it a name, ProRes4223 channel audio. Of course, you can name this whatever you want. However, I'm naming it like this just so I can find it later. Hit okay, and this preset will be saved. So if we head across to something else like here, it only has one audio track, but if we head back to the one we just created, it loads everything up as it should be. Awesome. So from here, the last thing to do is to export it to a file. So I'll just leave it as sequence 02 and I'll just hit export because it's reading the source files from an SSD and it's saving it to one. This is going to be incredibly quick. One downside of being forced to use QuickTime, ProRes or anything else besides say H.264 or Havoc even means larger file sizes. So over here, I've got a couple of exports. Sequence 02 is currently 2.8 gigs. And when I exported it using a Daniel 2, it's 4.19 gigs. So remember how I showed you the Daniel 2 one? Of course, if you don't have that plugin installed and you don't care about it, then it's fine. You can just ignore me talking about it. All you need to focus on is the .mov we just created. I'm gonna drag and drop both of these into my project just to show you how to set them up 
So looking for sequence 02.mov, all we need to do is drag and drop it into our sequence. And there it is. There are three audio sources on their individual channels. If we hit play, you can see they're exactly the same as they were over here. It's just that now, instead of being at three separate audio files that have been edited, they're now one separate video and audio file combined. Of course, you can either right click unlink them or hit the key on your keyboard to do that. And you can go ahead and edit these individually once again. Awesome. So now you know how to edit and export and possibly even import multi-track audio video. Now, because I talked about Daniel 2 before, I'm going to go ahead and show you what happens if I import this video. I'm just going to drag and drop it back into my sequence and you can see something a bit strange. Instead of three stereo audio tracks, you can see the little divider halfway up here. We have six separate mono tracks. So it's left one, right one, left two, right two, left three, right three. So that's a bit of an issue. If we hit play from here, the left will go into the first track, right into the second, and the second tracks left will go into the third track and it will be completely broken. So how exactly do we go about fixing this issue? Well, simply just remove it from your sequence, head across to where the file is, right click, modify, audio channels, and inside of here is where we get to fixing. So clip one, two, three, four, five, six are the ones that go into your timeline. Up here, media source channel one, two, three, four, five, six is the actual media file itself. So at the very top, clip channel format, I'll change it from mono to stereo. You can see that these got a lot bigger. Clip one has left and right, clip two, etc., etc. But the media source channels at the top haven't changed. So you can see that they're basically already set up correctly. One and two is left one, right one. So these are set up properly. Everything is how I want it to be. All I need to do is at the top over here where it says number of audio clips, I'll simply half that to be three, click anywhere, and you can see it's set up basically correctly. Simply just hit OK. And then you can drag and drop the video file back into your sequence and it's set up properly, ready for you to edit once again. So anyways, that's about it. This is incredibly useful. Of course, if you want to export it to something other than QuickTime, you may have to rely on other plugins, other exporting plugins, or of course, after exporting it, you can simply use something like FFmpeg to convert it to a more compressed H.264 while copying all of the audio channels across directly. Either way, that's outside of the scope of this video. This was just to show you how to import, edit, and export multi-track audio video from inside of Premiere Pro. Hopefully this has made it a lot simpler for you. I've mainly been avoiding this just because of the difficulty of setting it up, but once figuring out a way that I can explain this, it's become a hell of a lot easier. One of the things that I really struggled with was finding these little checkboxes down here and setting up the sequence properly because some tutorials just don't show it. Hopefully this one's done a good enough job of explaining it. Anyways, my name has been Technobo here for Troubleshoot. I really hope you find some use out of this video because if you came looking for it, this is the answer you were looking for. Ciao.